First, let's go look at how we turn auto commit off. In order to do that, what we have here is, is a batch application. If I run this application, what happens is it runs through a number of records and um, updates them in the database right there and then does a read. But suppose something happens in here where I'd like to control the consistency of my business data, so I'd like to turn auto commit off and manage the transaction demarcation on my own. If that's the case, what you've got to do is grab the connection and turn auto commit off. So you do that by grabbing the connection, call it connection, and um, the very next thing there is to set auto commit off. So now I'm using that same connection to feed to my model, but before I do that, what I'm going to do is set auto commit to false. And now suppose I don't even do anything in the database. So all I've done is uh, made a connection right here with the model. Now let's just try to run it that way and see what happens. So what happens here, once again, is I'm grabbing a connection, set auto commit to false, and then just closing out without doing anything. So we'll see what happens there. And notice that I run the same guy and I get an exception. And that is because over here it says I cannot close connection while the transaction is still active. That means I've got a transaction open and active. The reason I've got that transaction open and active is I've set auto commit to false. In order to get that transaction back to being auto commit true over here, and in fact, as far as JDBC and Derby are concerned, ending the transaction, I can do it this way by set auto commit to false and then set auto commit to true on the end. Now if I do this, my exception goes away, even though it didn't do anything. So that's the first thing is you've got to, you have to be aware if there's a scoping issue here of um, where you want to set it to false and where you want to turn it back on to true. Now let's go make this a slightly longer running process. I can do that by setting my uh, my thread to sleep a little bit. Suppose I set it to sleep, let's say, for about 10 seconds. Then I gotta catch that exception, of course. And now I've got my guy sleeping for a while. Now notice he's not doing anything in the database. He's setting auto commit to false and then setting it back onto true. If I do that, and I run that batch job, and then if I run my application to interact with the database, notice that I can still interact with it perfectly fine while that uh, guy is out there with the transaction open. Well, he wasn't doing anything, and that's the reason. If I go in here and instead have him do a read, and then try to run that same guy, so I'll run my batch. He's sitting back there running a transaction. Run my application and get and put those values, no problem either, because my transaction back on the back, on the bash job was doing a read. But now let's go change it to do an update. So he's gonna insert a record right there before he keeps on going and sleeping for 10 seconds. So I'll run that bash job. Now I'll run my application. And notice I can try to do a get and it freezes up. That's because the, the other batch back there has the whole system locked down. So I can't do a get or a put in those circumstances. But uh, let me show you one more thing here, and that is that uh, I could, over here, in this case, do a read. And remember that when I'm running, in this circumstance, when I'm just doing a read, everything's fine from the application on the other side because that's not causing any, uh, any problems with my ACID properties at least with the way the isolation is set up right now. But one of the things we can do is if we'd like to have uh, uh, more access to the database, in other words, I'm sitting here doing a read, what happens if later on during my transaction I do another read and somebody might have changed that data out from under me? Well, that could be a problem. And um, what you can do in, in such cases is also go into your connection and set another property. And that other property is the transaction isolation. So I can go in here to my transaction isolation. And there's several different uh, isolation levels you can use. But let's, uh, just for the demonstration here, use the, uh, right there, transaction serializable. That is the most severe form of isolation, meaning 
um, it pretty much can translate into an entire database lock depending on the technology or, or the vendor you're using from your database. But right there, if I say that guy, and then I do a read right here, we'll see what happens. So I'll start that guy up and run it, and then I'll run my app. And notice when I'm running my app over here, when I try to do a write to the system, it locks it up. I can do a read from outside because uh, I haven't said anything from the GUI application about what data I don't want to see or do want to see necessarily. I'm just using the defaults. However, in the underlying batch job, I've said I want my transaction to be running an isolation mode of transaction serializable, meaning I don't want to see any changes from anybody to the database while I'm running my transaction. So for some batch jobs, maybe that would be necessary so that you don't see any effects from any other transactions while you're running your guy. Other people are allowed to read the data, but of course they can't update any of the data while you're running. In any case, there's a lot of issues here to, to think about, and um, just keep in mind that once you get into this transaction type programming, you're probably an awful lot better off using an application server or some other kind of framework where you're writing Java in a container that manages all those transactions for you.